The world of agriculture owes a great deal of debt to all the cattle of history. They were the ones who pulled carriages and plows through the land so that farmers could plant their seeds, and later produced milk and beef. So with this list, we pay homage to the unsung heroes of our everyday meals. From the holy Brahmin cow to the ever-popular Charolais, here are 15 most unique cows in the world. Number 15. The Donny. Now you'd think that most cows in the world look more or less the same, right? Well, wrong. Very, very wrong. The Donny cow is a fairly distinct and individual cow. It really sets itself apart with its straight back bearing a big hump, a small face, and short alerted ears. Not to mention they're normally a medium sized cow, but the biggest cow in the world in 2020 was recorded as being a Donny. These cows have a wide range of colors, with their spots being either black, brown, or red. Their tails are quite long, and they have a cute little white switch at the end. The bulls of the breed are renowned for being very agile, and the male bull usually weighs around 400 kilograms, while the female comes in at a considerably less weight of 300 kilograms. This breed of cow is also known as a drought breed, which means that it's very good at trotting and moving. Locals who breed these cows often use them for cart racing as well. During the racing season, people can even sell one of these cows for up to five times their usual price. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Brahmin. Some cows, well, they're more inclined to race, and others, they have a much more spiritual background. Such is the case for the Brahmin breed of cow. For many centuries, this breed was, and still is, considered a holy cow in India. But after many years of having to survive through droughts, pestilence, and other things, the cow has adapted itself to harsher living conditions. These adaptations allow Americans to transport the cow over to the United States and begin breeding them there. Their breeds can often be found all over Texas, along with many other parts of the world. The Brahmin has a high tolerance for heat, sunlight, and humidity, and good resistance to parasites. And that makes them ideal for any sort of climate you could throw at them. Their loose skin is thought to be a big help in sturdiness against different kinds of weather conditions, acting like a sort of insulation. Brahmin cows have very kind personalities as well. They tend to be shy, but also intelligent. This makes them very good mothers and very capable of producing milk under most any circumstances. Number 13. The Chianina This cattle breed is the OG. The Chianina is one of the oldest known cattle breeds in the world. So old, in fact, that there are actually records of praise from the Georgic poets, Calumella and Virgil, and were even models for some Roman sculptures. The breed came mostly from the west central part of Italy and was found in a number of different living conditions. Because of this, the breed can differ in size and type depending on its region. Until recently, the breed of cattle was used as a drought cattle and pulled carts. But with the advent of many modern agricultural technologies, the breeders were able to select more precisely which cows were to be bred. This allowed the cow to be used for its beef in recent years. Their hair is usually a sleek white, and they have a very defined and extensive muscle structure. The bulls tend to have darker hides and have a black pigmented skin color. They can weigh between 800 and 1,000 kilograms total. Number 12. The South Devon when the South Devon cows are only little babies, I think they're the cutest ones of all. They're little brown balls of fluff. But as they get older, however, they really sprout up, and then they turn into strong and sturdy cattle. Not only is it a cute little fluffer, but the cow also took part in one of the most important expeditions in the history of the whole entire world. 
and by this I mean the South Devon was aboard the Mayflower in 1620 and helped take part in the colonization of the Americas. By the 1800s, the South Devon was a very well-established cow and was used for mostly at the time to pull carts. But by the middle of the century, through selective breeding, they tripled their usage. And suddenly they were being used for their butterfat milk and beef as well. The South Devon breed is the largest of British cows. It sports a large frame and is very muscular. It has a fairly wide head that leads to a deep full body. And the bulls can begin to be used around 15 to 18 months of age, continuing to work for another 12 years. Number 11. The Main Anjou. Ah, yes, the French cows have arrived. All terrible French accents aside, France is famous for their agricultural prowess, and these beautiful cows are really a testament to that. The main Anjou breed, is now called the Rouge de Pre, got its beginnings in the northwestern part of France. This area of France is perfect for beef production, seeing as it's the host to both grasslands and tillable lands. There are some prize-winning cows as well. In the 1850s, this breed of cow had won a lot of awards at many different agricultural shows and conventions across Europe. That's pretty cool, considering that cows were brought over from England not only about 20 years before that. So well done, France! And as you can see, these are definitely some very chunky boys here. The bulls weigh in at between a whopping 2,000 to 2,500 pounds, while the little ladies are a little more dainty, ranging at 1,400 to 1,600 pounds. This chunkiness is what provides such great beef in the end. So delicious. So stay chunky, my red and white friends. Number 10. The Glen. And now we have the Germans. The Glan breed of cows, typically found in the Rhineland Palatinate region of Germany, and originated from the brown cow breed in the late 18th century. During this time, there were a bunch of Swiss cattle making their way to the region, which led to people in the area crossbreeding with brown cows, which then produced the glands. Gland cattle are very strong cows and are mostly kept in foraging systems. The breed matures pretty slowly in general, but this makes it perfect for keeping in extensive fattening systems. As a product of the system, the cows are known for their milk production and on average produce about 4,446 kilograms of milk per lactation. Their milk is of very good quality, containing about 4.07% of butterfat content and around 3.53% of protein. In terms of their physical stature, the glan are really nothing to write home about. They're pretty average across the entire board, weighing in at 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. They also have coarse, lightish brown fur. Looks like it's time to step up your cow game, Germany, because France seems to have you beat. Number 9. The German Angus. Ooh, seems like Germany is entering in another cow contestant for us to inspect. Now let's see, I know that I do love me a good Angus steak and these cows are quite black and fluffy as well, but they haven't won any prizes. Sorry Germany, it does appear though that they were bred in the 1950s in Germany by crossing Aberdeen Angus with a bunch of different German breeds, but still it's not up to snuff with the French. These German Angus buddies are raised almost specifically for beef production, and with Angus in the name, it's kind of not surprising. They can, however, also be used in vegetation management, which is a fancy way of saying they're living lawnmowers. The cattle are usually solid colored in black and brown and red. They're always polled, which means that they don't have any horns. And compared to other similar cows, the German Angus tends to mature much faster, making the calf mortality rate very low. Its original breed, the Scots Angus, tends to be fattier, making the German Angus nice and lean. Which isn't normally how I would enjoy my steak. I like them nice and fatty. Number 8. The Parthenase 
Now here comes France back at it again to show Germany how it's done. The Parthenays is one of the oldest recorded breeds in France, and like many other cows on our list, the Parthenays got its beginnings as a drought breed, and in later years would become a sort of multidisciplinary and, and began being used for butter and milk and beef. Because of their area of origin in France, they're very well adapted to cope with all extremities of climate. Roughly 30 years ago, the Parthenays were exported to the United Kingdom and Ireland and brought about a considerable increase in their population numbers. Shortly after, the breed would then be transported to North America and is now recognized as the market topper, with crossbreeds stemming from these leading to trade. The bulls for the breed are very muscular and are well suited for most types of environments. The cows, however, are a little bit more daintier and very adept to producing fine milk and butter. Because of this balance of power between the two, the cows are perfect for anyone who's looking for the well-rounded cattle breed. Number seven, Montbéliard. Another beautiful French cow, the Montbéliard is a red pied dairy cattle from the area of Montbéliard in the department of Dubes in the bourgogne franche comte region of eastern France. I probably mangled all those names. For those of you familiar with French culture, the Comte cheese is one of the most popular in the country. And just as well, the Montbéliard breed is used predominantly for milk and cheese products. Now that's not to say that these cows aren't also pretty good producers of beef. They're actually recorded as having better beef characteristics than Holstein cattle. That being said, their manner of producing milk is perfectly suited for cheese making systems, so this is where they actually stay. The breed has been crossbred with the Holsteins breed and has improved their longevity and fertility. Their fur seems to be the stereotypical of what you would think a cow would look like, except with red spots instead of black. Their usual size is average, and they have a very tame and shy temperament. This is a cow who could be friends with all the cheese lovers of the world. Now I think I can speak for all of us cheesers when I say thank you, Monsieur Montbéliard, for your lovely Comte de Cheese. Number 6. Baza Days I think you guys are beginning to catch on to the fact that many of the cows on the list come from France, because like I said, they're renowned for their agricultural prowess. So the Bazadais, or Gris de Bazaz, is a French breed of cattle that takes its name from the town of Bazas in the department of the Gironde in the southwestern region of France. I'm really sorry, all you French people. I just not with it today. The cattle is so revered in its hometown that each year there's a festival that's dedicated to it called the Fête des Bouffes Grasses, and that's held to celebrate the fattened Baza days and the incoming harvest. Imagine just getting super fat your whole life and then having a festival thrown for you. That sounds like my kind of gig. Except maybe the harvest part, because that's where you end up getting murdered. The Bazadays was traditionally a drought breed used for tasks like hauling cut wood from the forest. Big surprise there. But now, guess what? You got it. It's for their beef. Another big surprise, really. Though I think it should be mentioned that this is one of the top beefs in France. So you should definitely give it a try if you have the opportunity. Number five, limousine. Now, no, it's not like the car, the limousine. I know where your heads are at. This cow is another French cow that comes from the limousine and marché regions of France. Like literally all of the other cows ever, the limousine breed made the transition from being a drought cow to a beef cow. However, the breed didn't really make the switch very well, at least at the beginning of the century. Let's just say they made an epic turnaround though. With the mechanizations of agriculture, breeds like this were no longer needed. Although the limousine breed became used for beef, but their numbers began to dwindle with time. 
Then, in the mid-20th century, the numbers shot back up, and the limousine breed became the second most populous breed in France, just after the Charolais. It's since become a worldwide breed, raised in roughly 80 countries, and many of which have breed associations. The breed has boomed in popularity because of its muscle composition and its fast production capability. Scientists in the 1990s even found that these cows' genetics were very strong, which helped to lead to its current status as being one of the most bred cattle in all of France. Number 4. The Brown Swiss now we're going way back in history with the Brown Swiss. This breed's been documented to have been one of the oldest dairy breeds in the history of the world, and some of their remains have even been found to be used by ancient Swiss lake dwellers. And when I say ancient, I mean really, really super old. The remains that were found of the Brown Swiss were said to have been from 4000 BC. The breeding process is said to be traced back to monks who lived in a monastery. Benedictine monks, in fact. So the cow's definitely been around the block and withstood the test of time. The brown Swiss cows are brown in color. Big shocker there, right? And they also have dark blue eyes. These pigmentations help them to properly resist solar radiation eh, so that they may take to grazing all day long. Brown Swiss are actually robust cows and are very prolific in their ways of breeding. They're also capable producers of nice and fatty milk, and the beef they produce is nice and marbled as well, which gives it a rich and tasty flavor to their beef. Number 3. The Charolais now finally we've arrived at the king of French beef production, the Charolais breed. These cows are king for one major reason, it's because they're so freaking delicious. Apart from their wonderful tasting beef though, they're actually very temperamental and produce their meats quickly, allowing for a very high volume of output. So thank you for the burgers my king, we all salute and bow to you. This breed originates from and is named for the Charolais area surrounding Charolais in the department of somewhere in France that I can't pronounce. Though it does come from France, the Charolais is in fact a world breed, with its estimated 730,000 population being found all over the place. The largest populations, however, come from the Czech Republic and Mexico. The Charolais is among the heaviest breed of cow as well, with its bulls coming in at around 2,200 pounds, all the way up to 3,600 pounds. Another super awesome and adorable characteristic of the Charolais? Well, they have pink little button noses. All of the cattle in the world, I'd have to say that the Charolais is probably my fave. Number 2. The Belgian Blue As the name implies, this is a Belgian cow but it is most certainly not a blue one. When the light hits it correctly, however, the cow's black spots can actually have a bluish hue to them, so the name's not really that far off in the end. Anyways, the Belgian blue cow made its big population break in the 19th century in Europe when it was bred with a Charolais and then transported to the UK. The Belgian Blue is definitely one of the much bigger breeds of cattle. It has very prominent muscular features, which is what it's famous for. Their muscle construction is what's called double muscling, and that gives it a beef render of 80% off the carcass. Now, for those of you who don't know, that's a heck of a lot of beef from one cow. And when it comes to their color, it's pretty stereotypical. Black and sometimes red spots on a mostly white hide. They do have straight backs with sloped shoulders and a strong and broad head. They're also very gentle as well, which makes it very easy to herd and physically maintain on farms. Number 1. Jersey now the history of this boxy looking breed is somewhat of a mystery. There are no real records of this type of cattle before it arrived on Jersey Island in the United Kingdom, though most researchers do agree that the Jersey breed probably originated from, well, you guessed it, France, where some cattle resembling the Jersey can be found. The Jersey cattle have a solid and light brown coat of hair, sometimes having some white splotches as well. 
the true Jersey cattle will always have a black nose bordered by a whitish muzzle. So be on the lookout for this if you want to see a tried and true Jersey cattle. Apart from all of that, the Jersey tends to be on the smaller side, weighing only about 400 to 450 kilograms. Now they do have a good temperament, which is very important for a dairy cow, such as the Jersey breed. When the cattle become overly temperamental, this can actually spoil the milk that it produces, or at least begin to dampen its quality, along with it damaging the equipment that needs to be attached to it in order to properly extract the milk. So much of the food we eat today is thanks to cows, like the ones we've seen on our list, and although some of the agricultural practices in the world aren't really doing anyone any good, we can still say our proper thank you to these cattle. So thank you for all of your service and the delicious meals. Which one of these cows was the absolute cutest in your opinion? Let me know in the comments below, also check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.